and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Zach Davis, pastor of First Baptist Church in Mark Tree, Arkansas. Today I want to do a video on some books that I think would be beneficial to your eschatological journey, whether you like them or not. Chew up the meat, spit out the bones. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel down below. Follow us on patreon.com slash Zach Davis to support what's going on here on the channel. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about what books to read, specifically about certain topics. So I want to begin today just by kind of giving you some of my ideas and some things I think that you should check out. Now, number one, a book I always recommend is called Through New Eyes by James Jordan. This book's not specifically about eschatology per se, but it will help with biblical uh, symbolism and some typology stuff. So Through New Eyes, you can type it in on your Google search. It'll bring up a PDF by Gary North. You can read it for free online. It's probably about 40 bucks to buy if you're gonna get a paperback copy. So Through New Eyes by James B. Jordan. Another one I would recommend in that setting is Peter Lightheart's A House for My Name. Peter Lightheart's A House for My Name. It'll kinda of go through the Old Testament it's more of like an Old Testament survey, but ties things in all along the way. Helps you to see the scriptures in a good way. A lot of times people will ask, what's a preterist commentary on Revelation? Well, there's also an online PDF released by Gary North called Days of Vengeance, written by David Chilton. You should check out Days of Vengeance. Uh, he's uh, someone I think that helps put together a lot of stuff. Also good at symbolism, biblical typology and really helps us to give an understanding of the historical setting that the book of Revelation was placed in. Do I agree with everything that's in it? No, but I don't agree with anyone on everything, and I don't know very many people that do. That's part of studying. We don't just take somebody's word for it. Uh, we examine it, and you know, we, we take what we want and need and what we believe is right, and we formulate from there. Another one I would recommend in PDF form is called Paradise Restored, also released by Gary North, and it's written by David Chilton. This just kind of gives an overview of biblical eschatology, deals some more with some passages, a little bit of a shorter and quicker read compared to Days of Vengeance, which is seven or 800 pages, um, but it would be really good to work through. So again, that's Paradise Restored. One question I get a lot is, Zach, what do you, what do you think about 2 Peter 3? What do you read on 2 Peter chapter 3? Peter Lighthart also has a commentary. I don't know what it's called on 2 Peter 3, but it is from a preterist perspective. It would do you well to check that out. So just type it in, whether it's in Amazon or type it in Google, 2 Peter 3, Peter Lighthart, and that'll pull up for you. He's also got some articles if you want to check them out. Biblical Horizons still has their website up or the Theopolis Institute. You could probably find some real good information there in blogs and articles. Another book I would recommend on 2 Peter chapter 3 is called The Elements Shall Melt with Fervent Heat. This is by Don Preston. He wrote this. It does a good job of tying in 2 Peter 3's idea of the new heavens and the new earth with Isaiah chapter 65. Uh, this is a, a really good study. It's just really speaking about um, will the earth be destroyed or not or what does that have to do with and the covenantal language that's associated with it. So if you're looking for 2 Peter 3 stuff, Peter Lightheart, check him out. And then The Elements Shall Melt with Fervent Heat by Don Preston is good for that. If you're trying to figure out some things in the Olivet Discourse, number one, I would point you back to mine and Travis's videos, Can the Olivet Discourse Be Divided? And if you're more of a reader and would like to do something else, I would recommend Gary DeMar's Last Day's Madness. You can find it um, numerous different spots on the internet. Um, Amazon, check out American Vision. And Last Day's Madness, he really deals with uh, how the Olivet Discourse taken through is something that happened in our past. I think it would be beneficial for you, even if you don't read it all the way through, just as a reference to check some of that stuff out. So Last Day's Madness by Gary DeMar. I would also recommend uh, something that is um, called Armageddon Deception by my friend Mike Sullivan. This has to do with a lot of different areas. He gets into... Uh, things from the Olivet Discourse to 1 Corinthians 15 to apologetics on Islam and really the Zionist idea. Um, Mike did a good job with this really to help understand some things 
that are thought of and that go on in the Middle East, how they relate to biblical eschatology, and really lays out a good case for uh, really you know, the Holy Land, the Jewish folks, and how that all should be understood from a biblical aspect. It's a bigger book, but I highly recommend it. There's some really good stuff in here. And if you're familiar with any of Mike's stuff, he always does a lot of charts, and there are a good number of charts that are in that book. Another book that Mike uh, co-authored with Sam Frost, David Green, and Edward Hassert is something uh, that's called House Divided. And it, what it is, it's bridging the gap in Reformed eschatology. So they really evaluate partial preterism and amillennialism and kind of show harmonization uh, between those two things. It's a response to something that Keith Matheson, Doug Wilson, and others released called When Shall These Things Be? And this book was put out, I'd say, 10 or 11 years ago. I think it's really, really good. It's not introductory. Uh, so if you're looking for something introduction level, I don't recommend House Divided. But if you're somebody who's been in the all-mill or post-mill camp and you're struggling to harmonize some of that stuff like I was, then I think House Divided is really for you. I'm not saying there aren't some things in here that could be picked up uh, by somebody who's introductory to the preterist idea of eschatology. I just think this is probably more for some of the Reformed folks battling all-mill, post-mill thoughts and give it a, give it a check. House Divided, uh, Mike Sullivan, some of those guys. If you're looking for something very in a, introductory, something you say, Zach, I need something easy, I need something simple, well, I would check out Glenn Hill's book, Christianity's Great Dilemma. Uh, this is one that has good reviews from a lot of folks. It, really something in layman's terms. Uh, he avoided big words just to lay out something simple to say, all right, what do you guys believe? What are you thinking about this? This is Glenn Hill's Christianity's Great Dilemma. Check it out. Not too long of a read, pretty quick. It, the pages are bigger, uh, but the font's pretty big too, and this book will be helpful. I don't have a hard copy of Pete and Rachel Ruse, uh, The Return of Christ, Why Are We Still Waiting? It's one that was released just a couple of months ago, but Pete and Rachel Rue, The Return of Christ, Why Are We Still Waiting? It's also an introductory book. I would um, you know, compare it probably to, to Glenn Hill's, uh, just in kind of an overview of some of the thoughts and the way we think about a preterist eschatology. One of the oldest works on preterist eschatology is called The Parousia, written by J. Stuart Russell. And this walks through New Testament text all the way from the Gospels to the book of Revelation, just showing, um, you know, you can reference it if you want to go to the middle and look up, okay, what are the preterist texts in Timothy and see a preterist approach to that. The Parousia is good for that. What's unique is this copy that I have here, um, Russell, who has tendencies of full preterism, some would even say he's a full preterist, this foreword was written by R.C. Sproul and by Ken Gentry, both men who are not. But they understand the value that's in this text. This is, I don't know, in my opinion, one of the most popular texts uh, for understanding a preterist eschatology, just because it's such an older uh, volume. But it's good. It is a thick book. But I use a book like this more as a reference instead of just sitting down and reading through it all. Not saying that you can't. I did. Um, but now in my life, I'll just go back and reference it for some specific things. All right, if you're looking for a book on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, this might be a surprise to some of you who hear this name, but this is called Exegetical Essays on the Resurrection by Sam Frost. 1 Corinthians 15. It's a really good work. It's really, really short. It's really easy to understand. He puts some good quotes in here about uh, orthodoxy, about creeds and confessions, and really from some church fathers early in the book. And then he walks through 1 Corinthians 15, just giving a discussion about what all, um, about what all really 1 Corinthians 15 is about. What was the question that was being asked about the resurrection of the dead? Were they saying that nobody would rise, or was there a specific group of people that they believe wouldn't come out. And I think 1 Corinthians 15 helps us to understand some things corporately. He does a good job dealing with the body that's sown. Just think about this. It says that the body's sown into the ground and then it dies and then it rises. Well, does a physical body go into the ground alive and then die? No. And, and that, it really helps to turn some things on the head in 1 Corinthians 15 there. And that is by Sam Frost, who used to be a full preterist and now is not. But Don Preston still sells this book. 
So go get it and check it out. It's really good. Two books I'll end with are both by Don Preston. If you're wondering who Babylon is in the book of Revelation, Preston does a good job of laying this out, not just from the book of Revelation, but tying in the rest of the scriptures. And I think this would answer any question that you have. If you don't want to read the book and you just want me to tell you Babylon is Jerusalem in the first century, and I don't think there's anybody else it could be, but that needs to be proven, and he does a good job with that in this book. If you're looking for something on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, I think that Preston's We Shall Meet Him in the Air is a really good book with that. I remember the first chapter of this book um, was something that was eye-opening to me. It was one of the first books by a preterist that I had read and just thinking about the way they thought. This is a thicker book, and I'll be honest, it's not the easiest book in the world to read. It does get technical at some points, but it's good. I think you should buy it, pay the money, and get it. It's something that you need in your library. So we've covered a good number of topics there. If you're looking for 1 Corinthians 15, or 1 Thessalonians 4, or Babylon, or Introduction, or All of That Discourse, or 2 Peter 3, hopefully some of that stuff will be helpful to you. Um, it's worth it. Uh, pay the money. Buy the books. I don't get anything for me telling them, uh, for me telling you to buy their books. There's nothing like that going on. I just know how helpful some of those have been to me, and I want to share that information just because I get so many questions about what books am I reading, what should I read, what topic covers this. Well, that's some of the thoughts. Like and subscribe down below. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.